Hey guys, how you doing? Ron's a nut here. Well, today I'm finally able to begin the thunderstorm build. Uh, what you're looking at, of course, is the uh, Case Labs uh, SM8 Merlin case, um, sponsored by Case Labs. And then uh, laying around it right now, I've got some of the uh, Bit Phoenix Spectre Pro fans and uh, some of the uh, Bit Phoenix Alchemy and uh, Central's Pro Pack cables from Performance PCs. So I want to thank uh, those guys for sponsoring. Uh, the parts for this uh, build and uh, we're going to get started now with the actual uh, uh, build of the system. Well, before I can start putting the pieces into the case I need to assemble the processor onto the motherboard, you know, add the RAM and make sure there's enough clearance for that Dominator RAM uh, under that uh, Fantex uh, CPU cooler. So uh, and especially to make sure that I don't have a DOA motherboard uh, or uh, RAM or a problem with my processor. The processor is probably unlikely, but uh, I haven't fired it up yet. So uh, first things first is going to be the, uh, to assemble those pieces onto the motherboard and on the bench here and uh, check that out to make sure that uh, I've got a, uh, a functioning motherboard and uh, CPU, RAM, and cooler set up. So uh, I'm going to take you through uh, those pieces of the build. Those of you who have uh, assembled a processor onto a motherboard. Uh, you may want to fast forward through those uh, parts, but I like to do my videos so that anybody coming in can actually, uh, even somebody new, can uh, pick up and follow through with this. So uh, uh, bear with me, um, but uh, I won't uh, take through, through all of the painstaking um, uh, pieces of it. I'll try to edit it down as uh, short and sweet as I can while still maintaining the key important parts of the build process. All right, let's get started. Well, first up, I'm going to install the uh, i7-3770 CPU. And the 3770 CPU comes with a uh, stock cooler, although we won't be using that. We're just here for the uh, CPU. Alright, when you're installing the CPU, you want to make sure that you line up pin 1 with the, uh, the pin on the uh, CPU socket, pin 1. And then one thing that helps is uh, on the CPU, you uh, have the little dimples on either side of the uh, circuit card um, that the processor is actually mounted on. So uh, that usually is a good gauge to help you line up the chip and all you need to do is just very gently Drop it right in there. Once it's in there, I'm going to put it on lockdown. All right. Next up, we'll get out the uh, Fantex and uh, look how uh, it gets assembled. And then while we're at it, we're going to position it over there to see um, how well the uh, Dominator RAM sits underneath the uh, CPU so uh, we'll get a feel if we're going to have any kind of interference. All right I've got the uh, Fantex uh, just placed on top of the CPU and that's the orientation it's supposed to be mounted in. So uh, I'm going to uh, take out the Dominator and put it in the uh, uh, RAM slots and see if uh, if it clears that. If it doesn't then I've got to use different RAM. So let's take a look. Well I don't know if you can see it now I'll pick it up, but basically with this mounted in the proper orientation, even if you offset it a little bit, it'll make it, but there's no way the fan that goes with it is going to work. So this is, it actually rests on the top of the Dominator RAM. So have no fear, we have other RAM. So this RAM is going to go into the water-cooled build that's going to follow this. So uh, have no fear, you will see the Corsair Dominator RAM used, but it'll be in the next build. So let's get some other RAM that I hope fits. All right, well, we've got some Sniper uh, RAM. This is uh, 1600 megahertz uh, RAM, uh, cast level 99924. And uh, so this is some G Skill Sniper RAM that I'm going to put in here. It's uh, only uh, 8 gig of RAM. So um, 
We're going to give that guy a fit check, see if it will work. And we're going to put it in the black slots. Now this RAM I know works because I had it in the system previously. All right, and we have clearance. We've got plenty of clearance on CPU cooler and this RAM. All right. So now let's get on to uh, mounting the CPU cooler. In order to install the um, CPU um, mount for the uh, i7-3770K, of course I need the Intel set. This just comes in the uh, in the package with the uh, Fantex, so it's clearly labeled. This is the uh, bracket that I need. And then there's also an accessory uh, package that you also uh, need uh, in order to finish the installation. So uh, let me get it out and get all the pieces out and um, get it uh, oriented for installation. All right, in order to install the um, Fantex, you have to install a base plate first. This is the Intel base plate, and I have an uh, LG A1155. Um, chip. So what I'm going to be doing is mounting it um, in uh, position number two. So there are four um, brackets. There's a pad actually on this uh, on the four corners there. So you're gonna, I'm going to install it up underneath the uh, motherboard. But I need to first put the uh, put the uh, standoffs here and the um, in the right position. Position number two. I'm doing that right now. All right. And it, it mounts cleanly right over the uh, CPU backplate, and so though they designed it so those pads uh, give it enough clearance. I've got it in the right spot. Okay. Then next, you gotta mount these um, black plastic standoffs over it, or they call them studs. Now the next thing is to mount these two um, um, brackets over top of each of each either side of the um, CPU on the bracket here but they they point out that it's very clear that there's a special orientation as you can see of these um, holes on the brackets and they have to be lined up in a special way so they even give you a special sheet here from Fantex that actually shows you the bracket position that uh, is the correct one as opposed to the wrong one so uh, I'm going to study this and then I'll show you how to put that on. All right. Now, I don't know if you can see. I'll do my best to hold them up. But if you notice the, the way these three holes uh, align, they point in. They are on a slant. So when you have the two together, I guess it's kind of making like a V. You know, so imagine these points extending to a V. You have to have them both pointing in towards the CPU. So... In order to do that right, I would mount them right like this. So the angled ones from the back side are in, and this side they're also in. All right, so we have the V coming together. Now one thing to note, uh, before you, you actually uh, mount all this, you want to make sure you uh, plan the orientation or the direction you want your fans to blow. Uh, on here so you can mount um, you, you know this is the way I'm currently I'm gonna mount it so I'm gonna have the fans blowing uh, air out the back of the case to the back of the motherboard but you could if you wanted to mount it uh, this way so you would blow uh, air to the side uh, which would be you know maybe ventilating it going out to the top of the case um, or uh, or down so just keep that in mind when you're when before you finish uh, through this. The way I'm setting it up here is so that it, uh, the air um, is going to be drawn through the Fantex this way and exhausting out the back of the case and the rear, through the rear case fan.
So now what you're supposed to do is um, secure down um, these brackets using these um, using these uh, uh, nuts. So I'll go ahead and do that. There are no washers or anything that they give you for these. Huh? Okay, I got them started. My finger, and they do have a, a Phillips head tip on the top of these. Okay, now it's time to uh, apply some thermal paste and then uh, using this bracket mount the Fantex onto the CPU. So uh, first what I'm going to do since I've been putting this piece of, uh, I've been putting the Fantex on top of the CPU just for fit checking and it's been sitting on my uh, static mat here. It may be a little bit dirty. So I'm going to clean it a little bit with some um, some thermal thermal uh, material remover really there's no thermal it's a brand new chip I'm going to actually just take the, therm the thermal surface purifier from um, these are made by Articlean and uh, wipe off the top of the uh, CPU real quick I have been using um, MX4 uh, for a while, so that's what I'm going to continue to use here. Um, before, all right. Now there are many different ways to apply thermal paste. I used to be one that uh, put it on the chip and then spread it uh, uh, completely across the top with a credit card. But there is a video um, that I believe um, Arctic Cooling did on uh, the various ways to apply um, thermal compound and. Um, the ones that seem to work the best are just the, the rice pea in the middle or the dot. And this is a small chip, so that would probably work as well. But I'm going to put this, the line, do the line method. So I'm just going to put a line of uh, thermal compound and then let the uh, cooler spread it, spread it out under pressure. Now what you're supposed to do is mount the um, bracket on top there and there is a uh, I don't want to drop this on top of the CPU. That would be funny. You got to put this bracket on here, and there's also a, um, a threaded uh, screw that you got to screw it down. So once I have it on there, I can remove the plastic piece on the bottom, set it down over the top of these two, and then tighten, then tighten it down with uh, these screws that are spring-loaded and retained on this bracket to tighten it down onto the uh, processor. So. Uh, I think I'm going to need a longer screwdriver to get between the uh, fins on this tower. All right, so I got to tell you that it was tricky to mount this plate to the top of this, uh, this the base of the um, heat pipes uh, because what I had to do is I actually took that um, thumb screw and uh, placed it in the bracket and then using my screwdriver, I put it right down on top of it and then uh, screwed it in there but it uh, it's not a simple thing to do because you have to deal with the space in between here and though my hands are a little small I was able to get it lined up but getting it in there is going to be uh, going to be tricky for anybody um, it'd be nice I don't know if that's uh, uh, maybe a, a magnetic uh, tip screwdriver might do the job all right so now what I'm going to do is peel off the uh, the base and you have very nice, flat, smooth surface. And what we're going to do is lay it on here. I'm going to start screwing down. the captive uh, screws onto the uh, stand to the uh, standoffs underneath the bracket and I'm alternating as I tighten it down to either side so I don't torque down one side of the CPU too much 
And it says to stop when the screw is at a natural stop. And that one's at a natural stop. That one's at a natural stop. All right, so we have mounted it. Now what we need to do is uh, mount the fans to the uh, mount the fans to the uh, cooler towers. Now on the fans, there's there are little holes, mounting holes that you need to put these uh, fan adapter clips in here. So there's little clips that come in a baggie, uh, four per fan, and they actually give you uh, twelve. So you can mount a third fan on the Fantex if you wanted to. You, you can upgrade to a third fan. So what I'm going to do now is put those clips on and then get the wire brackets out to be able to mount them to the tower. Now when you're mounting the uh, fan clips onto the uh, fans, uh, you want to make sure you are aware of the orientation of the airflow. So uh, of course on the side, all the fans, all fans, they have the, air, the airflow uh, orientation. So it's blowing uh, out through the side where the uh, motor uh, is mounted and so uh, I put the clips I push the clips through uh, so that the wire fingers can connect to this side and basically these fans will be mounted to the uh, to the cooler just like this it's going to be interesting to see how you get these guys in here but that's what's coming up next. Before mounting the uh, wire um, clips to it, there are four, they, they provide, um, looks like two, four, six, eight uh, rubber bars. So these are to prevent um, vibration from the fans onto the cooler. So what you do is you take these bars off and you, you place them right along the side right here uh, for where the fan's actually gonna touch the cooler. So these are you know, vibration dampening uh, pieces that uh, are going to be uh, applied to the to the fan uh, towers here. So I've got one I've just taken off. I'm going to mount here right now. You see the rubber strips on either side of the fan. Okay, now it's time to put the clips on. Okay, mounting these. Uh, clips onto the fans are not the most intuitive uh, mounts that I've ever used, but basically um, this is how they should be uh, mounted. You got um, the bracket coming over them and then you see this bar will be pointing out. So um, here's a view of both sides and a view of how, how they're mounted onto those clips. And once you have that done, then what you do is you line it up onto the uh, cooler and then you push the bracket into the side. There you go. So that's one. And we'll do the same thing for the center one. So we have processor installed. We have RAM, albeit not the RAM I originally wanted installed and we have the uh, cooler installed so uh, right now uh, I do need to um, connect up the power cables to the uh, Fantex CPU cooler and then um, after we have that done it's about time to um, fire it up. Now in order to connect up the uh, cables I want to connect it to the motherboard uh, this motherboard has a uh, uh, is PWM controlled, so I want those two to be able to control by that. And they do give you a fan, fan splitter, and it is a nice short one. Now, if I can hide it out of the way, then I will do that. But it's not, it's not, um, it's not braided in any way. I mean, it's not sleeved. So it would have been nice if they would have sleeved this. And it would have been real nice if they would have sleeved it in white, just like they did a wonderful job with these fan cables. So I'm either going to use a black cable since the color scheme in this system really is uh, black and white. It does have the yellow highlights and then the uh, there will be a lot of uh, lightning blue lighting. 
So let me take a look and see which one looks best and then we'll uh, get it wrapped up and then connect it to the motherboard. All right guys, so take a look at this. This is all the cabling I get to contend with. If I want to mount this uh, directly to the CPU fan header on the motherboard, which I want to do. I'm going to see if I can dress all these cables and tuck them up underneath here in a nice neat way so that they're kind of out of the way and unless you're looking at underneath this tower you don't see them. So let's see how creative I can get with doing that and just to give you an idea how much space you can take a look there and see uh, what we got to work with. So uh, I think there's enough space in there and I'm going to try to make it as nice and neat as I can. So let's see what we got and then I'll show you. Alright, so uh, I was able to uh, bend and tie wrap all the cables together and put them underneath the uh, CPU cooler. So they're resting between the heat pipes and the top bracket that mounts the uh, CPU cooler to the CPU. Uh, let's see, get a top down view, you cannot see, well, that sucker is big, you cannot see the cables protruding out from this side. From the side underneath you can see them, um, but you're not going to be looking at them because you'll be looking at them top down. Top view down over the CPU cooler kind of takes up a good portion of this motherboard, but uh, that's what you get when you want to have a heavy duty air cooler and uh, to uh, overclock your CPU with. Alright, so now uh, it's time to um, let's just uh, put it on the tech bench and uh, fire it up, see if we have a post. Alright, now it's time to get the uh, mount the motherboard onto the tech bench, but I always forget one important thing. Many times I do. I'm going to put it on now, the I.O. shield, so uh, I don't forget and screw the motherboard down and realize i got to take it off again. All right, we've got the uh, motherboard now <coughs> lined up. Now remember, this motherboard is a CEB uh, form factor, which is the server and workstation, but uh, all of the mounting points are uh, ATX. So the motherboard, uh, I guess, is just a little bit thinner here. It doesn't uh, doesn't stick out over the edge, and it fits perfectly on this on this tray. So I'm going to go ahead and go around and start mounting the uh, putting the screws in. All right. Now I've got it all uh, tightened down and mounted onto the uh, uh, motherboard tray uh, as a tech bench right now from the uh, Merlin SM8 case. And uh, while I was mounting on there, one thing that uh, struck me was this is so tall that I was concerned that maybe it would not be, um, that it would be taller than the tray. And that would be a bitch because that would be a, a, a showstopper. I would not use this cooler then. But it, it doesn't, and I don't know if I can, I mean, I, I've got an eagle eye view on it right here. I'll do my best to show you the lineup, but I don't know if you can see it, but it just clears. It is, if it's just right at level with it, it might be a couple of millimeters below it. So, uh, all right, CPU mounted tray. Let's get power supply connected up and a display and a keyboard and a mouse and uh, let's take a quick check. You guys, one of the things that I uh, showed you during the uh, motherboard review was the uh, this motherboard has a 4-pin uh, uh, ATX connection uh, next to the 8-pin. Now I already have one 8-pin connected and here's the second one that came with my power supply. Now if, for most of motherboards if you have this configuration you can slide this connector on here but You'll notice that capacitor right there stops this guy from uh, engaging all the way. So what I had to do was buy an adapter. And so uh, at uh, Performance PCs, uh, I was able to pick up an adapter here that allows you to connect it on. And then this guy gets plugged into right into the motherboard. 
So just be aware of that if you're using this power supply, you do need to um, have to deal with, uh, with that um, if, if your power supply doesn't have a four pin uh, natively on its uh, harness. All right, so now let's uh, get a graphics card in here and uh, see if this thing uh, comes up. For testing, I have a uh, G4 7600 GTOC. This uh, guy doesn't require any additional power, so I use him for my uh, initial power on self test. And if for some reason it were to fry, I really don't care. Well, I would care, but it's not like it's going to take out um, some other much nicer video card. All right, we're just about ready to turn things on and fire things up. Let me take you off the tripod so you can get a look at the screen. See if we have success. All right, we have the uh, motherboard all mounted. CPU cooler installed. Power connected only to the main power connector and to the 8-pin and 4-pin CPU connection. We have a uh, an old PCI Express uh, G4 7600 as a graphics card and uh, just a mouse and keyboard ready to rock and roll. So let's see what we get when we And we have now have to press the power button. Let's see, I don't have any signal on the graphics card yet. Okay, I was able to get uh, the uh, video to come up and what I had to do was the PCI Express Lane switches, they were on, but I turned them off and then I turned them back on. Uh, so they were all back in the on position and when I turned the system on it came right up And actually so you can see how quickly it comes up. All right. I'm pressing the power switch right now There's ASRock and I have bright lights so you kind of getting washed out there. It is right there right into the U5 BIOS so we were able to uh, install the CPU, found a problem with the RAM, Corsair Dominator won't fit underneath the Fantex uh, air cooler, CPU cooler, and so we went with the uh, G-Skill Sniper RAM, which fit, mounted the uh, Fantex PHTC14PE CPU cooler, and uh, was now able to mount it to the tech bench and fire it up. The only issue we had was the uh, PCI Express switch um, just switches just needed to be turned off and on again to make sure that the uh, the PCI lanes were uh, good to go. So uh, I hope you liked it. That's it from Ron's and Nut. If you like please like and favorite and if you're so inclined, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.